Hi, it's Bruce. It's Sunday, April 3rd, 2011, and I just caught yesterday's mandate of Catch Me If You Can. Unfortunately, my boyfriend, partner, husband, Bill, was out of town because he had a um, uh, terrible emergency up in South Dakota and he had to leave. So he missed it. But I went. Asked a very good friend to go, and of course I got a definite yes, because people love to go see musicals. Alright, now, this has been a great year for musicals and musical revivals. As you know, in my last two blogs, I've just raved about Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Fun! How to Succeed in Business Without Me Trying. Daniel Radcliffe! I know some people don't like him. I just loved him. And it was fun. And Book of Mormon, which is funny and uh, and pretty great. So, catch me if you can. I wasn't sure, but I wound up liking it. I, it uh, Priscilla, uh, Book of Mormon, and uh, How to Succeed, I would rate above Catch Me. And when I first heard Catch Me If You Can was being turned into a musical, I thought, well, I don't know if they can do that. And I'm not sure they completely succeeded, but they succeeded, and it was entertaining in many, many places. The reasons to see Catch Me If You Can, it's a glossy, expensive, well-paced, mostly musical, uh, colorful and tuneful, and it's got two great performances, and that's the major two reasons to see it. Aaron Tveit as Frank Ab Abagnale Jr. in the film Leonardo DiCaprio. Aaron, uh, Aaron kind of got screwed a couple years ago by not getting a Tony nomination for Next to Normal. He, I think he'll get one this year. Uh, he's just wonderful. He's the center. He, every number, God, that man, he's good looking, he sings, he dances, he's got, he's got it all. A lot of stuff is placed on Aaron's shoulders, and he carries them straight and tall in this show. Norbert Leopold plays the schlumpy FBI man, played in the film by Tom Hanks, who's after him. Uh, Agent Hanratty. And, uh, and he's excellent. Now, in the first act, he has a number called Don't Break the Rules. And after this, as everyone was screaming bravo, and I was screaming yeah, uh, he has really nothing that quite equals that. Uh, at the end of that song, I thought, oh my God, he could win the Tony for Best Actor. By the end, I think he's in competition, but I actually almost would have put it in his pocket after that number. I'm still a Daniel Radcliffe fan. I hope uh, Daniel gets that Tony. And uh, I know some people don't agree with me, but I'm to catch me if you can. Okay, the other good stuff in Catch Me If You Can is it's got an onstage orchestra that Mark Shaman has written some great uh, 60s sort of Rat Packy songs to, and they swing. So you've got a, a, a great orchestra doing some great music. The thing I didn't care for too much is they set it sort of in the frame of a television special where Frank Abagnale is going to tell his story through television. Now this does allow Jerry Mitchell to use some great 1960s costumes, which are period, and uh, sort of a uh, hull blue kind of women dancers in great 60s outfits and guys uh, doing some great, but it's a, it becomes a little forced almost in the choreography. It's almost like too hectic, too 60s hot, but, but the audience gets kept getting swept into it, so I can't say it was ever boring. I'm just not sure if the tone is completely right for it. All right, now, uh, Mark Shaman did the music and lyrics, Scott Whitman, his, I think it's his ex-partner, I think they were together, I don't think they're together, but they seem like they're together when I see them on TV, did the lyrics, and Terrence McNally did the book. Now the book is kind of a stretch. As I said, I'm not sure that this is a great idea for a musical, and uh, this idea of doing it as a TV special, it works sometimes, but it doesn't work in the majority of times. Also in the cast, in this... 
I don't know, I was a little bothered by this. Carrie Butler is given the role that Amy Adams had as the woman that Frank falls in love with way at the, toward the end of the movie. And, uh, and she comes out at the very beginning when he's introducing all the characters. And then he has this horrible line about, line about how she's, Brenda's wonderful. Now, Brenda, go stand over there. And I'm thinking, yeah, now she has... That's a terrible thing. Tell Carrie Butler to go stand over there when you know she's not really going to come back till Act Two. It's like we really know she's up in her dressing room uh, doing something very constructive, I'm sure. She's got plenty of time. All right, now Carrie Butler's great. I love Carrie Butler. It's just a little hard role to cast someone that good in and uh, then actually tell them to like sit over there. All right. Uh, other people in the show, Tom Wopat, does a pretty good job as a father. Hard to uh, get that Christopher Walken father in the movie. I think he got an Oscar nomination. He's so quirky and wonderful as he always is. And sort of lost in Act Two are Brenda Strong's parents, uh, uh, Nick Wyman and uh, ah, Linda um, Linda Hart. I know the heart. I could read my own writing. They try really hard in a scene with the, where Frank goes to visit down south, Brenda's parents. But then they have this, and this is truly not a very good number, our family tree. Now this just comes out of nowhere, and you're really thinking, this is a number on a television show that is so extraneous. Uh, even on a TV show, you'd wonder why it was there. So there's moments like that that don't work. It also gets a little strained. They really try to pull your heartstrings between Hanratty and uh, Frank Abagnale not having a father and they give him the father-son thing. And, you know, it's, it's there a little bit. It's just almost a little bit too much. Now, in the end, I wound up thinking that I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to because I did go in. Uh, I had heard the demo before couple of numbers aren't in there anymore, uh, which I was glad about. They, there was a number called 50 Checks they had heard on TV, which I didn't think was a great thing to give Tom Wopat straight off. It was gone, and he had a much better number about pinstripes, which if you know the movie or whatever, you'll know where pinstripes fit in. Anyway, I, uh, it's enjoyable. Go see it, but I honestly would spend uh, my money on Mormon and uh, Priscilla uh, first. And uh, then if you're a Daniel Radcliffe fan, I don't want to push it down your throat, but I really like Daniel and I, I just like that little guy. Okay, now I'm supposed to go see Arcadia this afternoon, or I am, alone. And um, I don't know if I'll get to blog about it and get this done, but I'm going to try. Uh, if not, it'll be a couple days till I post. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm back. It's actually Monday after work. I think this is my first ever after work vlog. Uh, Bill's not back till tomorrow from Spearfish, South Dakota. It's having not a good time out there. It's hard. But anyway, I wanted to get this uh, second part out of the way because I don't have much time because I talk so much about Catch Me. But I did want to say that uh, yesterday afternoon I went to see Arcadia. Uh, I went by myself, but actually a friend got a single ticket and joined me. And so uh, I want to tell you that I love this play. I've seen it four times, once in England, three at Lincoln Center, and now now. Uh, this is not my favorite production, but, you know, I wound up really, I sort of like the New York Times review. I really like this play, and the play came through. Uh, David Laveau directed, uh, no bells and whistles. But that Tom Stoppard, what a way with words. Now, I have to admit, at intermission, there were like six people behind me who were like going, I hope they tell me what's going on in the second act from the first, tell me what's going on in the second act, I hope they tell me. And I said, uh, I, I laughed out loud and I said I had seen it and they like, people who didn't even know each other, they all leaned forward to see why I would see this play again and to get some insight into it because it was uh, it was going over their heads. I only recommend this to people who love Tom Stoppard. I think this is his best play. Uh, Tom Riley is exceptional as Septimus, and I love David Turner as uh, Ezra Chater. 
On the minus side, I thought Belle Pauli as Thomasina was a little weak. Uh, I know she's young, she's a little nasal. Actually, she grew on me in the second act, and I did. I react very strongly to this play. I think this play is one of Tom Stafford's most emotional plays. Uh, and Grace Gummer. She's Meryl Streep's, one of the Streep daughters. I just didn't like her at all. I just wanted to tone her down. So I, I highly recommend this to people who like Tom Stafford. I don't recommend it to people who uh, don't like Tom Stafford. It really takes listening to I understand the play pretty well because I've seen it so many times. All right, so uh, I actually had a, a really good time at Arcadia, and I'm glad I went. I got a TDF ticket and uh, really enjoyed seeing it. I'm glad I didn't miss it.